ಚಿತ್ಸ್ವಾಯಭಾವಾಯಭಾವಾಂತರಚಿದೆ ಆಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಜನ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಅಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುಮೃತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮ ತೀರ್ಥಂಕರೋ ಜಗತನ ಜಯವಂತವರ್ತೋ ಓಂಕಾರನಾದ ಜಿನನೋ ಜಯವಂತವರ್ತೋ ಜಿನನ ಸಮೋ ಶರಣ ಸೌ ಜಯವಂತವರ್ತೋ ನೇ ತೀರ್ಥಚಾರ ಜಗಮ ಜಯವಂತವರ್ತೋ ನಮೋ ಏ ತೀರ್ಥನಾಯಕ ನೇ ನಮೋ ಓಂಕಾರ ನಾದನೆ ಓಂಕಾರ ಸಂಗರೋ ತೇಣೆ ನಮೋ ತೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಕುಂದ ಕುಂದನೆ ಅಹೋ ಉಪಕಾರ ಜಿನವರನೋ ಕುಂದನೋ ಧ್ವನಿ ದಿವ್ಯನೋ ಜೀನ ಕುಂದ ಧ್ವನಿಯಾಚ ಅಹೋ ತೇ ಗುರು ಕಾನನೋ ಅಹೋ ತೇ ಭಗವತಿ ಮಾತನೋ ಧ್ರುವ ಅಚಲನೆ ಅನುಪಮ ಗತಿ ಪಾಮೇಲ ಸರ್ವೇ ಸೀದನೆ ಒಂದೇ ಕಹೋ ಸುತ ಕೇವಲಿ ಭಾಷಿತ ಆ ಸಮಯ ಪ್ರಾಭತ ಅರೆ ಹೂ ಏಕ ಸುದ ಸದಾ ಅರೂಪಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ದರ್ಶನ ಮೈ ಖರೆ ಕೈ ಅನ್ಯತೆ ಮಾರು ಜರಿ ಪರಮಾಣು ಮಾತ್ರ ನಥಿಯರೆ ಜಮ ನೇತ್ರ ತೇಮಜ ಜ್ಞಾನ ನಥಿ ಕಾರಕ ನಥಿ ವೇದಕ ಅರೆ ಜಾಣೆ ಜ ಕರ ಮೋದಯ ನಿರಜ ರಾಬಂದ ತೇಮಜ ಮೋಕ್ಷನೆ ಓಂ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ದೇವ್ಯ ಓಂ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ದೇವ್ಯ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಶುದ್ಧಾತ್ಮನೆ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಜಿನೇಂದ್ರ uh today is uh, uh december 21st 2016 wednesday and we are taking our regular uh, class on samay sat and uh, long awaited thing for us is stanza 11 so here we are today we are going to start with stanza 11 <coughs> uh i need to have you have a seat belts on because it's going to be really bumpy ride uh, lots of informations are to be covered and uh, we will be able to, because we have done so much about vyavarna nishani almost for 10 classes that it will not be that difficult but it will be again even knowing all those things still it's going to take little while to digest what guru dev really really want us to uh, understand in this stanza <clears throat> so uh, without much delay i will go to the uh, um, slides <clears throat> Okay. So, 
share screen. Okay, so here we have stanza 11, as we say, long awaited stanza. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, Gurudev Sri has said that stanza 11 is a heart of the Samesar. The few stanzas are there out of 415 that Gurudev really loved it. Stanza 6, number, stanza number 1, stanza 6, stanza 11, stanza 13, stanza 38, and uh, then uh, going to stanza 141 to 144, and then uh, <clears throat> stanza 73 and last one is uh, stanza 320 308 to 311 also and 320. so these are a few of the stanzas that are uh, good they loved it by heart and this is one of them so <clears throat> what it says we'll sing the stanza with us to, together and then we'll see what happens <laughs> Vyavaharo buddhatho buddhatho desi do do suddhano buddhatho masi do kalu samadithi havadi jivo Vyavaharo bhutartho bhutartho darshitas to suddhanayaha bhutartho masitaha kalu samyagadrastir bhavati jivo Vyavahar naya abhutat darasit Sudha naya bhutat che Bhutat ne asrit jiva sudrasti nishaya hoya che <coughs> This is the meaning of the stanza. Basically what it says Vyavahar naya abhutat che Sudha naya bhutat che Em rushi sharoya darsayvi che Jeju Bhutart no Asray Karish, Teju Samyak Drastish. Omniscient Lord and spiritual monks have mentioned the conventional point of view is not true one. The pure point pure point of view is true one. Living being who takes the refuge in the true one is enlightened and from absolute point of view. So basically. Conversion point of view is not true one, and absolute point of view is true. That's all it says in the stanza, in a meaning of the stanza. <clears throat> and this is a Sanskrit uh, 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 commentary of uh, um, Amrachandra Acharya Dev, and uh, he has given a fantastic commentary on that. And uh, actually, each and every word can be dissected, and we can one can go through the meaning. <clears throat> um, I'm extremely fortunate that uh, there is a person in Jaipur, uh, Pandit uh, Arunji, and uh, he is uh, a Sanskrit PhD, and also he has tremendous love for Samesar and Gurudev. And uh, he really loves this uh, uh, Sanskrit uh, commentary of Amrit Chandracharya Dev and uh, he's teaching me Sanskrit one-on-one -on -one basis on the uh, video conference for last one year and I have nothing but a great great thing going on so he, he, he just loves these things and he will dissect this one and he can keep on talking forever for example well, I don't have that expertise right now, so we won't go through that. There is a Gujarati Tika is there, which is basically translation of Sanskrit into the Gujarati. And uh, thereafter, this Tika continues. There is uh, still more Tika on that one. And then there is a further explanation by uh, <coughs> uh, 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 Chandi Chabla. Pandit Jaichanji Chabra has given this Bhavarth, means further explanation. So, we'll go to the meaning of the stanza. What's the meaning of the stanza over here? <clears throat> what it says, conventional point of view, means Vyavarne, is untrue. And again, I'll throw the uh, 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 Sanskrit words also that we should get some familiarized with that, because sometimes 
it is next to impossible to make real meaning from that Sanskrit word to even Gujarati and or to Hindi English. So <clears throat> conventional point of view is called a Bhutarth. Bhutarth means true. A Bhutarth means untrue. So convention point of view is untrue. Remember all the convention point of view that we learn. Asadbhut, Upcharit, Vyavarne, Asadbhut, Anupcharit, Vyavarne, Sadbhut, Upcharit, Vyavarne, Sadbhut, Anupcharit, Vyavarne. All those four things that we learn, it is untrue. If it is unto them, why do you mention that? <clears throat> well, on the path to the spirituality, on the path to the understanding of the scripture, the conventional point of view will come. <clears throat> and we have to understand, but that is not the full stop. I want to go from Phoenix to New York. I'm coming in the plane. Plane stops at Dallas. That's not my final stop. Dallas will come if I'm coming American Airlines. So the stoppage comes in between. That's not the end point. So convention point of view will come. And it is important we learn about it. <clears throat> and then also learn how to go further from there. So convention point of view is Abhuta. Pure point of view, Suddhane, is a true one, means it is Bhutarth. A Bhutarth, conventional point of view, Vyavarne. Bhutarth, Nishchane, or pure point of view, or Suddhane. <coughs> now, when we say conventional point of view is A Bhutarth means what? Untrue means what? In comparison to pure point of view, the conventional point of view is untrue. Conventional point of view is true by itself, but when it's compared with the pure point of view, absolute point of view, then this night becomes a bhutar, means it becomes untrue. <clears throat> if I'm climbing a flight of stairs, I'm on the first step. The first step is important for me. <clears throat> because if I don't go on first step, I can't go on second. So first step is important while I'm on the first step. But when I go to the second step, the first one becomes secondary and less important. Now the second step is important. Then I'm going to the third. So second is less important. So this is the way Vyavarne uh, uh, and is there. Vyavarne <clears throat> is important. Convention point of view is important when I am on it. But I still have to go further. So that's why it is untrue. <clears throat> so then, what is a pure point of view? What is a Suddhane? This is the stanza which centers around Suddhane. So what is a Suddhane then? What's a pure point of view? <clears throat> pure point of view is a mode is a partial point of view is a mode <clears throat> when there's a reality in front of me and I'm thinking thinking about reality means I have reflective thought about reality then it is called reflective thought it is called vikalp, and that vikalp also produces inclination of attachment. So, when I'm in the reflective thought process, then it is called inclination of attachment, means rag. Thinking about thinking about eternal pure soul. Is better than not to think something else. But thinking means it is still inclusive of attachment, means rag. <clears throat> and I have to go beyond that stage to experience what I thought about it. 
I thought about the real nature of the soul. I thought about it, but then I go and experience and that is the end result. I want to eat food, I want to eat food, I want to eat food. I'm going to go for a marriage, it's going to be having good food and that's it. And I think about food, I think about food, I think about food. My tummy is not full with that thought. When I go there and eat, experience the food, eating the food, then my hunger goes away. Same way, here, when pure point of view is a partial point of view, is a mode. It's a reflective thought. It's a mode. <clears throat> the eternal innate state, all know our virtue of the eternal true self, means Gnayak Bhav, is the pure point of view. There is a conflict going on with the fourth bullet and fifth bullet. In the fourth bullet, we said that it's a reflective thought. It's a mode. But this mode is directed to the eternal soul substance. <clears throat> the pure, eternal, immutable, all knower soul substance. So my, my mode is directed to the eternal soul substance. Even though it's a mode, and mode is transient, but it is directed. Where is it directed? Not to the alien object. It's directed to the eternal soul substance. So the object for this mode is an eternal soul substance. And that's why as this mode has an object of eternal soul substance, that's why even this mode is also called pure point of view or it is called Bhutal, it is called true one. Usually when we talk about soul substance and the mode, eternal soul substance and transient mode, transient mode needs to be put secondary in nature. But when this transient mode is looking, looking, and making the, 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 the making its object as an eternal soul substance, then this this mode itself is also called pure pure also. <clears throat> In this stanza, the subject of pure point of view is also known as pure point of view. Who is the subject? Object is an eternal soul sub substance. Mode is a subject. Mode is doing this knowing thing. And because this mode is doing the pure point of view, means the, 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 the mode is directing attention to the eternal soul substance. That means the eternal soul, that, that mode is also called a pure point of view, or it is called uh, it is called eternal soul substance because this mode has given its all total surrendering ship to the eternal soul substance. So this mode becomes part of the eternal soul substance and that's why it is also known as pure point of view. <clears throat> now Pure point of view is partial point of view. It's called nai, right? That we know, no important part. It's a mode. It's a part of the knowledge. It's a knowledge mode, okay? But it's subject, subject matter for this mode is the eternal true nature of the soul. The eternal substance is a subject. Both, that means both. The mode as well as the all know soul substance, they both are considered as pure point of view. What is my aim ultimately? Ultimate aim is eternal soul substance. So now my mode puts a faith on the eternal soul substance. <coughs> Excuse me. When my faith is directed to eternal soul substance, that means 
now I know and experience the eternal soul substance. That means the more and the all knower eternal soul substance, they both are considered as pure point of view. Therefore, both are considered as, as a, because they're pure point of view, that's why they both are called Bhutas. They both are called true one. The mode, the pure mode, which is directed its attention to the eternal soul substance, number one, that mode. And second thing, the object of this mode means the eternal soul substance. They both are called true one. They both are called Bhutas. Now, there is going to be contrast between the stanza 11 and stanza 142. Gurudev has, you know, when Gurudev talks about one stanza, he just does not keep us guessing work. That in somewhere else, in some, some other places, it shows different way. And over here, you are talking different way. So what is the difference? So stanza 11 and stanza 142. In stanza 142, it will say that even the more we don't consider. Only pure point of view means eternal soul substance. That's it. And over here, you are telling mode as well as eternal soul substance. Both are pure point of view. So there's going to be contrast between those two stanza. And 142 stanza is extremely important. Means when one goes beyond the reflective thoughts, nine means reflective thoughts. When once you go beyond, when you go beyond all this noise and all this partial point of view and absolute point of view and convention point of view, all those things you leave behind, then only you have a deep experiencing of the eternal soul substance. That eternal soul substance is only considered as a pure point of view. So what is, what is, why this contrast over here? So Gurudev explains to us that in 11 stanza, it says the mode which knows the soul substance and the soul substance by itself, they are the one and the same thing. Even though they are two separate things, this is the mode and it is directing attention to the eternal soul substance. So they both are considered as one in stanza 11. Pure point of view is a true one. That's a, that's a center point in the 11 stanza. Then in 142 stanza, it says that even the reflective thought means the night, night. Reflective thought about eternal nature of the self is considered as, as hindrance in actual experiencing of the eternal true self. Remember, here I'm sitting in a meditative posture and I say, I'm the soul, I'm the soul, I'm the pure soul, I'm the all knower pure soul. And I don't have any other thoughts at all, nothing. I just get engrossed in this thought process about saying that this is the, um, uh, 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 I am the soul. I am the soul means two things happen. And that's called nai there. And because there's reflective thoughts, that's why it's called nai, partial point of view. Partial point of view always comes in the reflective yeah. thought. Yes. Um, I, I'm sorry for disrupting everyone else, but I just want to clarify something. I just have some. So first of all, with stanza 142, mm -hmm. I think, just another way of thinking about it is it that the thoughts are part of the body and the mind i mean the soul only has inclinations but thoughts are actually part of the body that's why um reflective thoughts are a hindrance is that true yeah you see 
thoughts are not part of the body thoughts are coming from the mind right so right. Mind, body mind is body the, so the mind you have to say mind so so thoughts are thoughts are occurring it's called reflective thoughts means i am quote unquote thinking about something i'm thinking about what's going to be weather tomorrow what time am i going to make it to work uh, what's going to happen to my family what's happened what is going to happen in my christmas vacation what are, all those thoughts are there instead of those thoughts now i'm making thoughts only about my eternal soul substance and i have no other thoughts coming in my mind about the alien objects of the universe only the thought thought i have is i am the eternal soul substance i'm the pure soul i'm the uh, all knower soul all those kind of quote unquote meditation when i do and meditation is kind of not a right word but lack of better words we are using the word meditation but here i'm closing my eyes i'm in a particular posture and i think nothing 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 but the soul only i have no other thoughts coming but that thought about soul is called reflective thought and when there is reflective thought there is it is called rag it is called inclination of attachment and wherever there is inclination of attachment that means there is no experiencing they are two sides they are two away from each other they are 180 degree apart reflective thoughts inclination of attachment rag and my pure nature is over here they both are far apart according so to is, what it to stands so so i think what i just am confirming that reflective thought is part of your mind and it's and it's with raga and dvesh and that's why it is um a hindrance in actually experiencing the eternal true self is that correct yes okay so oh, then going yeah. back to yeah. 11 now okay. going back to 11 what it says that hey you know what yes we know that part we know that it is rag we know it's a reflective thought but again what is this reflective thought about about my eternal soul substance so ultimately this reflective thought will quiet down quiet down and at particular moment i will enter into experiencing of the soul substance so that's why in 11 stanza it says even the reflective thought ultimately is going to end up to the experiencing phase and so we are making both as a true true thing both as a bhuta both as a real one so 142 stanza is extremely microscopic and says not even my reflective thought that we will consider okay amrit chandracharya is very very strict there and he has given about 20 kalash uh, 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 on that one on 142 stanza he wrote uh, 20 extra stanzas to try to explain that why reflected thoughts are also not good when i'm processing I, I, i'm going from point a to point b point b is my experiencing the soul when i'm making my journey making my journey here i come reflected thoughts are here and once i go beyond reflective thought then there is experiencing so in 11 standard it says okay you have reflective thoughts just before your experiencing of the soul we'll also consider that as a true one also so it is he's kind of stanza 11 is kind of a little bit liberal and 142 stanza is extremely strict it says no way jose we won't accept that one also as a right thing only right thing is experience only true thing is experience only bhutarth is experience okay so then i have a question about 11 yeah so um attributes have modes is my understanding mm -hmm. yeah so it's uh, so i'm reading it number 11 it says that the mode which knows the soul substance mm -hmm. so which attribute 
are we talking about? The knowledge part? The knowledge attribute. When you say, when you say no, no, no means knowledge, knowing. Okay. So the creation and, and destruction of a mode that knows the soul substance, yeah. that in itself is one and the same if you are having reflective thought. Correct? Yeah, that's what 11 will say that. But then 142 says, even that the mode, when you bring in the picture, we don't have, uh, Amrit Chandracharya says, I don't want that mode in the picture at all. That very second, experiencing occurs in the mode. So why do you say you don't want to bring the mode in the picture? Where, well, yes, you bring the mode in the picture, but make it so secondary, so secondary, as if it's not existing. Because my eternal soul substance is only pure one and it is taking precedence on everything else, you know. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, it, it means uh, uh, 11 stanza is somewhat liberal, but 142 is absolute black and white. It just does not say in a gray thing at all. Here, in, uh, 11 says gray ultimately turns into white. So, okay, we will accept that. And so, these are the things that we have to keep, uh, keep uh, um, our ideas alive because remember, uh, other day somebody had called me and says, you know, if you know so much about the detail about all this thing, it is useless. Why it's useless? Because it makes you kind of dry. Why dry? Because then you won't do anything. Remember, if we understand the real nitty gritty of the philosophy and real nature of the soul, and that is my end point, that's what I would like to rest. If I know that part, then it doesn't make difference which way I come to that point. So it is important we have to understand this part so we don't get stuck into the path coming over here. Because most of the time we get stuck somewhere and then we just think that, oh no, uh, whatever it is, that's perfect thing and I don't, do, I, want, I don't want to do anything no more. Or I don't need to do anything no more. Here, my, my end point is eternal soul substance and to get engrossed in that one. That's why I was telling that, you know, it needs to have, have a really, have a seat belts need, really need to be tight because this is really, really, I mean, uh, 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 hardcore philosophy starts here. So one must understand what perspective is used in a given stanza. So perspective is very important that in 11 stanza, the pure point of view is a reflective thought, but because it is only about experiencing, ultimately leads to experience, so that's why everything is true and the rest of the things are untrue. In 142, it will ignore that part also. So we have to have some of the, some of the background of the different stanzas coming time to time. Now, one who takes the refuge in the eternal true nature of the soul is considered to have right faith from absolute perspective, right? We know that part very well. I have taken refuge in my eternal soul substance and that's why it's called right faith and that is from absolute perspective. Why do we use this kind of words? Because to come to realization of the soul to come for self-experiencing phase, to come to eternal soul substance and to get engrossed in that one. While I'm making my journey, making my journey, making my journey on the path to my journey, there is going to be instrumental cause. Nimit will be available and that is going to be Dev, Sastra and Guru. Omniscient Lord, Holy Scripture, and enlightened monks. They will be coming with me to direct me to the right place. And so, when I get the experience of the soul substance, when I get samyak darshan, when I get self-realization, 
when I get Atma Darshan, Atma Nubhuti, at that time, I still had previously Dev Sastra Guru had helped me out. So the Dev Sastra Guru faith, faith on my omniscient Lord, faith on my Holy Scripture, faith on my enlightened teacher, that also can be said to be to have right faith from conventional perspective. Absolute perspective, I'm experiencing my soul. Fear, that's it. Conventional perspective. I have faith in my omniscient Lord, Holy Scripture, and enlightened monks. And so that is called conventional faith. This is the absolute faith we are talking. Next. Taking refuge means more is taking refuge. Who is taking refuge? Who is doing the action? Eternal soul substance is immutable, permanent, never changing. It remains stagnant, same as before, all the time, continuously. All the infinite attributes are same, immutable, stagnant, permanent, never changing. Changes are occurring only in the mode. So who is taking refuge in the eternal soul substance? Mode is taking refuge. But the subject matter of this mode is not the mode. <laughs> it's, it's becoming a little bit complicated, but we'll just di dissect that one out nicely. This sub who is taking refuge in the eternal soul substance? The mode is taking refuge. So what's the subject matter for this mode? It's the eternal soul substance. The subject matter for this mode is not the mode. Subject matter for this mode is eternal soul substance. Because I want to take, he, the mode wants to take refuge in that. Subject matter of this mode is an eternal tunage of the self and is not the mode. Mode, mode gives up its all existence and says, I'm, I'm, I'm just donating my total existence to the eternal soul substance so this is the way more is separate from one perspective but it just dives into the eternal soul substance so substance and more becomes one at the time now the faith mode of the knowledge more Faith more and knowledge more in the form of partial point of view takes refuge in the eternal true nature of the indivisible soul substance. Now, more is taking refuge, and now here Acharya Bhagavan goes a little bit deeper and says, Faith more and knowledge more. Why do we use those two modes here? Because knowledge decides what's the true nature of the self. Knowledge decides what's the constitution of the soul, what's the anatomy and physiology of the physiology of the soul. The knowledge mode decides that one. Once knowledge mode decides, then knowledge mode tells the faith mode. Faith, you are directing to the alien object since time infinite in the past. Come in. Its happiness is here. Bliss is here, knowledge is here, engrossment is here. So you come down here. So faith mode now takes turn from the alien object and comes to the, to the eternal soul substance. So knowledge mode decides the true nature in the reflective thought and then directs the faith mode to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to come to the soul substance. That means. It is called experience at the time. This is called right faith. It's called some magnesium. Now, when one takes refuge in the eternal indivisible soul substance, then he removes his wrong faith. Remember, faith which was here, knowledge mode says, hey, come down here. From, from alien objects that you have faith, come to the eternal soul, come within, you will have, you will like it. So when, when the faith mode comes to the eternal soul substance, means wrong faith from the alien object is gone. 
as soon as you have the uh, faith directed to the uh, eternal soul substance, then the wrong faith is gone. Remember, faith attribute has only two possible modes, either mode for the alien objects, which is called wrong faith, or mode for the eternal soul substance, which is called Samyak Darshan. There is nothing in between. So in the fourth Gunstana, when I bring my faith from the alien object to my eternal soul substance, and that is final thing. It remains there forever till I get liberated and point beyond. So faith is only two power points. Alien object faith or soul substance faith. Only two things. So wrong faith goes away, right faith starts. And so once the wrong faith goes away, means right faith has started. Still there is some leftover influence of attachment and aversion. What happens? Remember, we are talking three attributes right now. Knowledge, faith, and conduct. Knowledge mode decided the true nature of the self. What is the exact nature of the soul? And after deciding that, knowledge mode directs the faith mode to come to the eternal soul substance. Now, at the time, conduct. Conduct has so many garbage within. So it gets partially purified. But still needs to have more purification from 4th Gunstanak all the way to 14th Gunstanak up to 12 for, for the uh, conduct. So up to 12th Gunstanak, it needs to be purified in gradual stepwise process. So even when I'm in the fourth spiritual development stage, my faith is directed to the self, there is still some amount of influence of attachment and aversion left. Majority are gone, but still some left and that goes away gradually as the Gunsthanak progresses and then purity of the soul is perceived at 12th Gunsthanak when conduct is also pure. At 13th Gunsthanak, knowledge is also pure. And at 4th Gunsthanak, the faith attribute has become pure. So all these three things, Samyak Darshan, Samyak Nan, Samyak Charitra, all those three things becomes pure and that's called omniscient stage. Now, this, this increase of attachment, which is still present after the fourth gunsthana, they get dissipated as the soul for the progresses in gunsthana. So here we have taken three attributes, knowledge attribute, faith attribute, and conduct. Knowledge, faith becomes samyak darshan right away. Knowledge joins there, and conduct attribute progressively keeps on improving till at the end of 12th Gunsthanak there is a pure conduct, pure knowledge and pure faith. All three things are there. Now, someone having knowledge of 11 canons, faith in omnis and Lord, Holy Scripture, enlightened monks, means Dev Satra Guru, he observes five great vows. What, is, what are they talking about? Someone has an extreme intelligence and he has studied all 11 can, the 12 canons are there, 12 dvadashang, bar ang, 12 ang, 12 scriptural books are there. Each scriptural book has a huge thing. For example, first scriptural book, Acharang Sutra has 18,000 chapters and each chapter has uh, 51 crore means 5.1 million and more slokes in that one so there's a first canon second canon has 36,000 chapters third one has 72,000 chapters and things like that so it's a huge amount of scriptural things and somebody has a 
uh, 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 extreme uh, hard intelligence and he remembers all those 11 not 12 but 11 only he comes up to 11 he also has faith in the omniscient lord holy scripture enlightened monks he's also observing five great vows like a uh, uh, muni and everything all these are still called inclination of attachment state you mean knowing up to 11 canons yes knowing up to having the faith in the dev satra guru yes observing great vows and everything of monks yes but but this is all knowledge we are talking about this faith is still directed to outside faith is still directed to the alien objects and as long as faith is not directed to the eternal soul substance all those things are still called influence of attachment that means bondage means there is not going to be liberation to that person so they are very strict that you the, after knowledge it has to follow with the faith coming to the eternal soul substance without having right faith these influence of attachment states are known as wrong faith state remember faith is important faith is important if the faith is directed to the eternal uh, to the alien objects faith is directed to the alien objects it doesn't make difference how much knowledge i have on this side the faith has to come to inside faith has to come and take a turn and to come to the eternal soul substance so without the faith coming inside all this knowledge all this uh, 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 conduct and everything they are called wrong faith state only taking refuge in the eternal soul substance generates right faith. So for faith to be directed to eternal soul substance, one's faith has to get directed towards inner side and to give up the alien objects perspective. Once faith starts, then Dev Satra Guru faith is known as conventional form of right faith, even though it has a small uh, um, um, rag and dwesh present, teeny tiny slight uh, influence of attachment state is present, but that will ultimately go away. If there is a tree, if I ask you to take one leaf out from the tree, take one leaf out of the tree, how long will it take to completely make the tree bald without any 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 leaves at all it will never happen because new leaves will keep on coming and coming so that tree will not become uh, uh, um, uh, leafless i want to make this tree leafless means i want to make this tree as no rag and dwesh i would like to have complete dispassionate state in this uh, in, in in this uh, soul so what happens for the tree to take all these leaves out and make the tree bold what you have to do cut the tree from the bottom when you cut the tree from the bottom tree falls down still there are green leaves are there but how many days those leaves green leaves will stay there because there is no nourishment so within day two days five ten fifteen days all those leaves are gone similarly if i am the soul if i'm cutting my wrong faith from the bottom means my tree falls down there still some leaves are remaining still some minor increase of attachment aversions are remaining but how long they will last few days or something little time and then they will disappear too and i will become pure my conduct will become pure that's what it tries to say over here increase of attachment is also known as Inclusive of attachment due to instability in nature, asthita nora. When after fourth spiritual developmental stage, 
I have obtained knowledge. I have obtained pure uh, uh, right knowledge about the soul and everything. I really, really understood nature of the soul deeply. I brought my faith to this uh, eternal soul substance, and now I end up getting the right faith. When I get right faith, there is still left over a little bit influence of attachment is there, but that is called the influence of attachment due to instability in nature. Means I'm not able to get engrossed into the soul forever. And that's why few of the little bit about a little bit amount of influence of attachment and aversions are still there, but ultimately they also go away. Just like those fallen tree having leaves, those leaves finally they go away. Same way, this influence of attachment also will go away. Now, eternal true nature of the self is. Now we are talking with eternal soul. Self is full of luster, of pure faith, knowledge, conduct, super senses, bliss, and also all the infinite attributes are in the purer form. And so I enjoy this bliss and knowledge from this undivided soul substance. And I enjoy that one. I get engrossed in it. This is pure point of view, absolute point of view, or it's called Suddhane. So what is called Suddhane? Eternal soul, soul uh, eternal true nature of the self, having pure faith, knowledge, conduct, super senses, bliss. And this is called pure point of view. Even pure point of view is a reflective thought, but it is only thinking about the eternal self. And that's why this thing is also called pure point of view. The eternal soul substance is also called pure point of view because it's an object of pure point of view. It's an object of pure point of view, so it's called pure point of view also. Now, Amrit Chandracharya Acharya Dev starts with a tika, means a further detailed analysis of the stanza. So I think the time is coming up. So I leave over here because it's going to start brand new things, and uh, it's going to give a, a, a amazing amount of explanation about Vyavarnai uh, that we already have learned. But whatever we have learned is nothing when we when Amritsharya starts talking about a, a conventional point of view. Those four divisions are same, but application is so minute so microscopic so so so, so finer that uh, we will uh, we will just have to really really concentrate on it to understand any questions so far so basically on today it just says what is pure point of view that's all it says pure point of view is eternal soul substance that's it that's a in short for one, one sentence if you have to say. And thereafter, it's, it's going to talk more about everything in great detail about you know, analysis of the stanza. Any question? I know it's a little bit, uh, you know, a little heavy subject today, but uh, it's okay. So what? We already have decided that uh, we are here together. We are going to swim together and we will understand and uh, we will digest all this thing. If you have to go again and again, we'll do that. No problem with that. Okay. Uh, next week is going to be the Wednesday falling between Christmas and New Year. So can we keep it off? Because some of the people are going to be traveling and the family and all kind of things. So can we uh, keep it uh, postponed for next week? Because... I mean, the, 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 the next subject is, uh, the, the, is going to be really, really a uh, great one coming. And uh, I, want, I don't want to have anybody miss out. So probably uh, January 1st onwards, whatever Wednesday comes, we'll start. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So we'll do the closing then, okay? If there's no question. 
जावाणी के ज्ञान से सूझे लो कालो सोवाणी मस्त कन मो सदा देत हो दो नाइन टाइम्स नो मौका मिल गया